you better wind correctly, and you gotta set up maximum power always. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson, and in today's video, final video part four, we are putting the whole thing together. So today we're gonna to talk about the wind. That is a huge part of setting up the throwing chain reaction. So you wanna get that set in your throw, and pillar two, what we refer to as setting up maximum power, and setting up most power to start your throw, so you can apply speed, transition, lock down power, and smash the crap out of the finish, i.e. finish big. Be sure to catch up on the previous videos. This is part four of a four-part series on how to throw the disc if it is your first time as well, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications to follow us. So we're looking at core mechanical positions. We're not getting into all the specifics of how your strength levels are going to influence that, your special strength, your specific strength, how that affects your ability to learn and hit positions. Your knowledge base is really key. So what we're trying to do here with this video is really set you up. With these series, we want you to understand, I need to be able to focus on these things. These are the positions that I'm trying to achieve, and that's going to automatically automatically get you off on the right start. So let's take a look at our, at our six throwers that we've been kind of breaking down and looking at what are those mechanical positions, looking at our new throwers, looking at different mistakes. If you're a thrower, you may relate to one of these throwers. You may see yourself as one of these throwers in the future, and you might be one of these throwers now, and you might be making these same mistakes. That's why it's important that we're looking at it and we're kind of talking about what should be corrected and what's the right position versus some of the things you're seeing. So, and if you're a coach, then, you know, you're going to be looking at where you, what do you do when you have an advanced athlete and you have a beginner athlete? Well, you're going to be focusing on the core same positions. But there's going to be different tricks to get each athlete to do all of those things. And why we use this example is because it's really indicative of what you see with throwing. Nobody moves the exact same. Everybody's essentially trying to hit the same positions, but there's going to be differences and nuances to the individual. Today, we're going to look at the windup. And one of the things we want to do is this is where we're really setting up the throw. We talked about setting up the radius, the orbit, the high point, the entry axis, creating separation and stretch reflex. Now, one of the things we do inside the throwing chain reaction, we believe in consistency. We want to teach you movement patterns, rhythm, so that it becomes repeatable, right? That's the thing. When you look at Robert Harding in 2009 and you look at Robert Harding in 2013, it's the same throw. These, the, what makes the best throwers in the world is their ability to repeat highly technical, complex positions over and over and over again over a long period of years. And that that's what makes your best throwers in the world. Right now, what a lot of young throwers is, they're all over the place, right? They're doing with this throw, this throw, this throw. I always talk about the bullseye. We wanna take a bullseye. We don't want darts all over the place. We wanna get our darts centered in and we want all of our darts getting as close to the middle, and that's kind of what we're looking at technically. So we break down this, the, the setup into four parts. What's the outcome? What are we looking at? We wanna create length, and one of the things that we're trying to do is create that long position. So you're gonna see this athlete kind of moving both arms together. You're gonna to notice this athlete trying to create that length, and you're gonna see not bad, right? So it's starting out pretty well, and we wanna look, are we all creating length? So we look at Crystal, you're gonna see she's nice and long. You're gonna look at Harley, again, pretty good length. She kind of cups the discus and holding the discus, this is where you're really gonna see some issues. If you've got kids that have issues or you're a thrower, you don't feel comfortable holding discus, that is absolutely one of the things that you have to get out of the way first and foremost. And you wanna spend some time every day working on that until that discus just feels like it's a part of you and it's easy to move it. So you're gonna notice again, as we kind of look at our length, so look at our young thrower here, really great an advanced technique for a kid this age. Super long. So you're noticing how every athlete is setting up length and we're going to also set up what we talk about is the orbit. We want that discus, truly we want that discus up here probably at the shoulder height and so you're going to see this athlete's right out from the shoulder. We can get this athlete, it's not bad. This camera angle, it's a little, it needs to be up a little bit more but this athlete you're going to notice the discus isn't too low but notice how back the shoulder is. So what we're going to see here is an athlete Athlete that's winding themselves off balance and so you're gonna notice when we set it up look at our advanced technicians look at the look at the length how it stays here a lot of tension we want to keep the hips 
centered up. So we wanna keep the hips more here. Um, notice again, where we're looking at how the hips stay kind of centered here. Notice this athlete's hips kind of shift. This athlete stay level. This athlete's athletes are staying pretty level. And this athlete over here, they're turning. You see how they're turning? So everything's turned. So when you look at the back point of the wind, you wanna see this length. So here are the shoulders you can see are kind of here when they need to be a little bit more this way. So pretty solid here. The hip movement here is the issue. So why this is important. So when we're looking at these mechanical positions, we want level centered up hips. And if they turn too much, if their hips are turning and the shoulders are turning, then you're going to be overwinding and you're not creating the right tension. You're creating false separation. You're not gonna create stretch reflex and stretch reflex ultimately is much faster to be able to move the muscles in your body than consciously trying to throw the discus. You wanna whip the discus, right? And it's, we always talk about the analogy of the bow and arrow. We pull that back, let the arrow go. We don't try to, push the arrow and let go of the handle. And when we set up pillar one, we got the orbit. We wanna make sure that the radius is long. So when that discus is up higher and further away, we've maximized the radius. When we have the orbit in the right spot, we're gonna move through the throw and we're gonna come through that pillar five, six position on better balance. You're gonna notice that as we come out of our pillar one, we're gonna be shifting into our pillar two. Again, this thrower, new thrower, is doing a very nice job on technical positions. As we come around here, look at the length. So one of the things that we do is why do we wanna be long? Because we wanna be able to create that tension and move the lower body ahead. So this athlete here was doing this. So this athlete's actually working on a different position start. This is a drill, so we're trying to teach to get the left foot moving first. You can see that this athlete kinda of holds here, brings the knee in, a little bit of a more controlled start. That's something we advocate when we're teaching our newer throwers because it's easier to stay on balance and move around the throw. And you're gonna notice this thrower again, when we move those hips, the way that foot and that shoulder, she's actually like sitting back. Now when we get there, we get the right tension and we wanna sling into what we refer to as our pillar two. So when we look at this group over here, you're gonna notice crystal moves a little faster. So right here's your pillar two. So let's play it again. We'll watch these throwers. Again, we look at them in slow-mo. You can start to point out certain things and kind of notice where they're moving. Now when we look at terms, so here's our pillar one, and then here's our pillar two. So notice the difference. Now, what are we looking for again mechanically? We're gonna try to keep that discus relatively high. We wanna keep this hip underneath the shoulder and this knee doesn't go in front of the toe. Really, we advocate it's the motion of if it's moving. If it's too far in front of the knee too early, it makes it harder to rotate. And so you're gonna to wanna to find that spot. So if the hip isn't underneath the shoulder, the hips are going to fall back into the throw. So you're gonna see this athlete's hips are kind of turning back into the throw and it makes it very difficult to get around. We always talk about we want to have an imaginary line that we're moving around. Now you're going to notice this athlete's hips are moving back. You're seeing them kind of move here and so when that athlete moves that's going to cause the over rotation into our pillar three. So setting up pillar two, having the hips in the center and moving around on a more level is gonna make a huge difference. So again, notice our 10 year old versus our 17 year old versus our other 17 year old, right? Watch as they move into the throw, you're gonna see Crystal does a heck of a job of moving her body around. You see that? So everything's moving around. This is Chelsea. And again, look at the difference. She's moving over here. And this athlete is going to be over rotating a touch too much, right? The hips are, are sitting back and that's gonna prevent the big speed, the sprint into the middle. So if we don't get our pillar one and two correct, we don't get the right drop in into the throw. Again, what we're talking about are core mechanical positions. We wanna understand when we set up the throw, we have to have the arm height. We wanna create separation. We don't wanna have a lot of movement. We don't want a low point. Right, so when we set that, because when we move around the axis, think about it logically, if I have everything higher, the hips are up, everything moves, it's easier to move around the axis. Again, the new thrower doing a great job. This thrower is trying to focus on the right things, but the hips are moving back. And again, same thing, hips are moving back. This thrower is really moving out long and around and into the throat. You're gonna see a really nice long drop. And again, this is where you see how we put together 
the positions into our pillar three. So one of the things people confuse about the, the system or you hear different things or what sure is or it's something you try to teach every, what, we're, what we understand is, is that the throw is based on physics and biomechanics. Everybody essentially is at the world level is doing the same thing. Everybody's essentially trying to do more or less the same thing. You are going to have your own individual style. What we point out here is are we doing and hitting our core mechanical position? Is the axis moving? Do we have the right alignment? Do we have our hips in the right position or foot turning? the right amount, that kind of stuff. And are we moving through the right windows is one of the other concepts we teach. Each one of these throwers looking at their pillar one, you can see these differences. So you're gonna notice that the kids that are finding it easier to move, look at the position, look with the shoulders turned, look at the shoulders turned, look at the shoulders turned, a little less turned, pretty decent, kind of forced overturn. So now this is a way for you again to look at, are you doing any of these things? This is how we teach, so we get people to understand. These are the positions you're trying to hit. Do you see how you're not in those positions? So that's your pillar one. That sets up your chain reaction. Believe it or not, this is super critical stuff. This is how we're able to get big PRs. This is how we often have people who come in and train or PR in 90 minute training session, you know, or PR over the course of a weekend. How we set up the chain reaction is going to influence pillar two. Pillar two is about setting up maximum power. If we don't shift and move out and around the axis, right? So you can see here, hip underneath the shoulder, hip not under the shoulder, hip under the shoulder, under the shoulder, under the shoulder, not under the shoulder, is that's going to change how all the movement goes. So that's going to change the dynamic movement of the sweep. That's going to change the speed. That's going to have changed the balance. So this is what's really, really important for you guys to understand. So hopefully I've done that today and you now start to see how pillar one and pillar two. And so now let's look at the whole throw and we'll just look at things in terms of the six pillars. So now you're going to see and we're going to see our athletes moving and we're gonna see how they move long, you're gonna see how it's more deliberate, nice attack, you're gonna see what's shorter, who's dropping the foot, who's not re-wrapping, who's too active with the upper body, and now you're gonna see how these different positions work out. And again, here's what's really key. Look at who's the most in control when the discus leaves, okay? See how the arm came way around, this athlete's falling, this athlete's back, this athlete's pretty much in control, and this athlete's in control as well. Again, might add the 10-year-old phenomenal technique. Okay, so let's look at the rhythm. Now just watch and you're gonna see. Now Crystal, we had taken an easy throw. Um, this girl's name is Zuli. She was in her in an actual her first meet, hit a PR, and now you, again you see that. So the idea here, you see them all move. You're going to notice the rhythm, and you're going to notice who's smooth and who's moving through. And again, notice that pillar four. When we come up, look at the discus hitting the high point. I can't see the discus. Can't see the discus. I can see it a little bit, which is good. I can see it a lot, and I can see it a lot. Um, let's move her back a little bit right here. This is where you would see, I can still see that discus, okay? When you can't see that discus, right, we're getting into trouble. So you can see how they're tilting the upper bodies versus pulling the hips under them. Here you're pulling the hips, pulling the hips. Uh, close. Hips are backing in a little bit. Hips are pulling under. So again, this is what you're looking at in terms of your throw. Hopefully you guys see that. That's what I'm trying to point out. So remember guys, the setting up, your wind up is super critical. We're looking for that length. We're looking for that orbit. We're looking for that radius. We're looking for that entry side. We're going to be setting up maximum power. That's getting the hips over and around, not opening the arm too early, not holding it back, opening it long and in to pull you into that pillar three. And that's going to be the key. And then you're putting your whole throw together. So look at how we structure it. We show you each pillar has is a location in the ring. Each pillar has specific objective. Each pillar has positions that you learn to move and train and then you put all that together and you do that in a rhythmical, connective way so it becomes smooth, fluid, long, snappy, fast, powerful. And you wanna do it fast and thankfully that's something that we've shown, we've proven for years now, we get big jumps fast. If you're interested in big jumps fast, be sure to visit our website. Click the link in the description below. Go back, watch. I'd recommend watching some of the videos, pause it, look at some of the frames, see some of the things we're pointing out, take some notes. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and thanks so much, and we will see you guys on the next video.